Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to share with you my expense tracker template. This one's in Google Sheets. I'll leave a link in the description for this video where you can follow along with the post related to this video and where you can also download it. So how this template works is, you know, I've got 10 different expense categories that you can track along with an irregular one, which I'll go over in a bit. And, you know, you can set up your vendors, assign categories, and then enter your expenses. And then there's a summary tab that'll that'll summarize the uh, summarize your spending for you. So I'm going to start just by you know walking through this process a little bit. So let's say I create one cat category one as retail. Create another one for gas. Another one for um, as a home repair. And next I can set up my vendor. So let's say Walmart. So this will be a drop down for retail. Costco, let's also use retail. Chevron will be gas. Home Depot will be home repair. And let's add Target as well, another one here. And that one being retail. And so now that I've got my, my categories and my vendors set up, my, my lookups will work if I enter this um, correctly. So if I type in Walmart as my vendor and let's say, you know, I spend a hundred dollars, right? It, it does the lookup to say this belongs to, to retail. Now, obviously the name has to be an exact match and then it pulls in that negative value in there. And so positive amounts here show up as negatives here. And I'll show you why in a little bit, just because this is for the purpose of the, the charts in, in the summary tab. So I'll enter a few more expenses. So let's say Costco, you have a huge $700 expense and it by default goes into retail. But let's say this is a one-off expense related to a special event or whatever the case may be. And you don't want it messing up your, your spending for that, for that category. So this is where this irregular column comes into play. If you check this off, it'll, it'll now push that into that irregular category. So the purpose being that, you know, if you've got one off expenses that you don't really want to, you know, put towards your normal budget or you just want to be able to look at in, in a different section without disrupting your regular spending. This is what that accomplishes. It allows you to push this into that irregular bucket. And so moving on, I'll do, do a few more expenses. So let's say Chevron spent, you know, $50 on gas. And then let's say Home Depot was you know two hundred dollars, and then also let's put an entry for Target of fifty dollars, or let's do a different amount, seventy five dollars. There we go. So now I've entered some expenses. So you can see retail I spent one hundred seventy five, gas fifty dollars, home repair two hundred, and I've got these irregular expenses of seven hundred dollars. And here I've also got a section for my monthly income. So let's say I make five thousand dollars. A month and the purpose of that again is going to be on this summary page so if I click on here I've now got a summary of my expenses so this first chart is is a waterfall chart and basically it starts with my monthly income of five thousand dollars and then deducts all the spending that I made along the way so this is my my retail expense my, my gas my home repair and then all the other categories that haven't been used and then the, there's this irregular one. And the purpose here is, you know, this, this, this chart here shows me the remaining income before my irregular expenses. So if you wanted to track, okay, how much of your income did you have left, except for, you know, these irregular expenses, that's what that shows you. And this shows you your final remaining income after deducting absolutely everything, including the irregular expenses. So that's the purpose of that. So if I went back here and let's say made these, I uh, think, expenses a bit higher like let's say $400 at Walmart and let's say $275 at Target now if I go back here now you see that expense is much more significant now because on that retail summary now I've got $675 so that's taking all these retail amounts in there you know if I hadn't checked this one as regular go back in here now my expense is even more significant and there's nothing in this bucket here. So that's the purpose of, of that. So I've set this up to initially have 10 categories just because anything more than that. And I think this, this chart 
it's a bit too wide and might make the other ones harder to track as well. So I think that's a good goal to, to go with. Feel free to uh, expand it if you're comfortable with making the adjustments to this file. And anyway, if I go down lower, now I've got a breakdown by vendor, so how much I've spent by the different vendors, and also my percentage of expenses based on the different categories. So here I can see my total spending is 16.25, and that is adding up all of these values, 16.25. So I've got my total spending, and it has a breakdown between retail, gas, and home repair. So you can quickly in a snapshot see where you're spending the bulk of your expenditures on and also which which vendors and what your cash flow situation looks like so get you can use some of these uh, this tool like regular if i check that off and go back in here now my summary is going to have a breakdown of irregular spending as well so you'll still see the vendor breakdown but for from the category breakdown you'll see irregular expenditures as well so so that's how this uh, template works in a nutshell. Um, as I said, I'll have a post related to this and that uh, can go in a bit more detail. But basically, you start with, you know, entering. If you want to track the income, ideally, you know, put something in that you expect to make on a, on a monthly basis for budgeting purposes. You know, set up up to 10 categories here. Put in... Um, the vendors that you most recently use and you know you can add to this over time it doesn't have to be populated before you enter your expenses for instance if i were to just type in kroger and let's say spend a hundred dollars you'll see it automatically pushed it into to a not categorized category now if i flip over to the summary tab it doesn't get captured on here because i haven't assigned it to one of these categories but the expense shows up on here and it also shows up here, this orange one for not categories right here. So you can see it still gets captured in within these charts, like the total spending here is 1725. That is the total of all this, but it doesn't align to this, which is 1625. So that's the one thing um, that will be affected if you don't set up the, the categories and you've got not categories, then it's not gonna put it in any one of these buckets. And You'll, you'll still be able to see the expenses, but it'll be a reminder that, hey, you've got this uh, amount that's not not categories or that isn't set up here as a, as a vendor. And as soon as you do, you can select Kroger and let's just say retail for now. And we've got that in there. So you can always change these categories after the fact as well, which is the other thing. So the, the neat thing about uh, Google Sheets here is that once we go over to the summary tab, everything automatically updates. There's no refreshing. You don't have to do any of that like you might in Excel to update a pivot table. These are all automatically gonna update based on your selection. So it makes it really cool. It's a, it's a live, live report based on what you enter in here. So the purpose of this really is to be able to track your expenses on a, on a monthly basis. I wouldn't suggest making this into a a 10,000 line file that has all your expenses because there's no no setup here right now for different months or different periods. The, the, the point of this really is I wanted to create a way where you can quickly, um, you know, dump in your expenses for a certain period and just want to look at them, whether it's monthly or whatever period, and you can see where you, where you spent your money during during that time frame. Now you can extend this this data right now. I've got it down to about 200 rows. So all you need to do is you know copy these cells down if you need more space. Same thing with the categories. I've got the drop downs going all the way down here. But again, you can extend those further as you need. This section would remain unchanged because right now it's just set up for the 10 categories plus that one irregular, and then everything else. Um, works the same way you can put in any sort of comments for your own purposes to you know for your frame of reference as to what this was for and what you could also do is if you wanted to, to track expenses on a monthly basis you could just save this file and create uh, create duplicates of it for each month but for right now this is meant really just as a snapshot for a specific period probably a month I'd say in most most cases that you'd probably use this, especially if you've got a monthly income here that you're tracking against. But obviously, this is flexible enough that you know you can use it to for your own for your own purposes, however you however you want. The formulas are all in there, so you can modify it as as you like. So hope you find this template helpful, and let me know what you think of it in the comments. Thank you.